Okay, Don, we are recording. So what are we going to talk about tonight? Okay, we're talking about making money. And you, you see, I did a short video on setting nukes up. Uh, I'm doing a video again uh, when we get that whole yard set up. It's just a short video that I've done. It's about a minute long. And at the present, there is about 400 to 500 baby nukes there. And there will be 1,500 there at one location. So when people tell you you can't put bees in the pine thicket and make money, I don't want to know <laughs> what, what they're doing wrong. But uh, we, uh, we're going to try to do a video uh, at least a minute to three minutes to show you the old refrigerator. I'm big about being so cheap and recycling. This is an old refrigerator, and right now it's got five to 600 cells in it, and it'll hold a little over 1,000. And our total cost on it, probably with the light bulbs and the thermostat, less than 50 bucks. So people say you can't do this. You've got to buy all this fancy stuff. I don't agree with that one bit. I'm cheaper than anybody. So if you've got questions about setting up nukes uh, or in the bee yard, uh, if, as you probably looked at, we're using house trusses which uh, we get them basically to haul them off because they get discolored. they got a good life as far as you put treated wood up underneath them. Uh, the nice thing about that versus the way we used to do it, you're crawling around on the ground constantly. We have like a shoe shine box that we used to sit on and you scoot from one little box to another. And four hours of that beats the heck out of your back. So now we got trusses, and they're at knee high, and when you bend over, you're, you're just leaning forward just a little bit. You can work 10 times the boxes. And we're running those boxes there about th two and a half to three feet apart. So each of those stands has got about 10 to 12 on it. And the yard is just basically getting set up. So uh, the one behind the house, we're setting 100 packages in tomorrow. And those are going into nukes for going out into uh, April. And at the house, if you drop by the house, we can sell you some uh, cells. You'll pull them right out of the incubator, cut off as many as you want. And just about every other weekend, we'll probably have 100 to 200 extra. In. Now, if anybody's got any questions on that, uh, the most economical way to set these things up is if you take a three pound package and you dump it into a shaking box and, and just kind of squirt it down or wet it down just a little bit. We use a dipper like you do on the old well. And you just dip into the bucket there and you take out a, a cup full of bees and you dump them in each mini. And then we come by and we set a cell in there. Now we, tr we try to time these cells so that they come out within 24 to 36 hours. So when we put them in, then we're gonna have a pretty good uh, take on them. And we got them pretty much all the same color in that one yard. There's about three different shades of coloring, but my home yard, I like to do a lot of multicolors because I run them a lot closer. It's more of a teaching yard. What you see on that video of one minute there, that is strictly a commercial yard. And we are very uh, reluctant to take people into that yard. That's why I got a teaching yard at my house and in uh, Sharon, I got that old house. We're gonna, right now we're running a hundred and some hives right there. That's a teaching yard. But the yard that I shot that video in, that's one of Steven's yards. And he's got about four of the yards. So he don't want nobody in his yard. First of all, we can't take a chance on disease because we're turning out several thousand queens a week. And one of his yards over there is strictly a yard that we shake from. So we go in there and shake out a couple hundred packages before lunch. Uh, and we do that two, three times a week. But I'm doing basically what I'm doing at my house, in the house over there, uh, behind the house in Sharon. There's six acres there. So eventually we'll have 500 hives there for kids to play with and to learn on. So if you've never seen a commercial yard, you're going to be totally amazed the amount of bees that's in the air when you walk in that yard. <clears throat> got any questions on how we set a yard up or anything? Uh, we have a question from Sharon. Uh, go ahead, Sharon. Hi. Hi. Um, 
I live in Oklahoma. Hi. Um, I live in Oklahoma, and I've texted you a lot, and, and you are really good at uh, getting right back to me, and I appreciate that. Um, this is just my second year of doing this, and um, so I was kind of, I got those uh, two-frame nukes, and I was going to do some walk-away slits, and I have one hive that is just full of bees. But I don't want, I don't know when to do it. I don't want them to uh, swarm, but I don't know if it's time to split either. Well, if your hive is full of bees, uh, I wouldn't say do a walk away split because if you're doing a walk away split, one, I, one part of that hive is going to have a queen and the other one is not. And when they make cells and then you, your queen flies out to mate, your chances of that coming back might be slim depending on the type of year. That's why we're using mini nukes. The mini nukes, you're, you're losing a cup of bees if the bees don't come back. In a walk away, that right. walk away split that you're doing, we'll set 30 to 50 nuke boxes up. So if we lost 48, we're still ahead of what you're gonna do, see? And never make a split unless right. you have yeah. a white queen cell. Now you can get those out of your own hive. All you have to do is cut them out if you've got wood and wax or wood frames with a starter strip and let them draw natural wax. It's going to be your best okay. bet to do. But uh, you mentioned you had two frame nukes. I don't recommend people building them. I think it's a waste of time. That's strictly my opinion. If you're going to do a, mm -hmm. uh, a mini nuke, do a standard stuff. A five frame mini with or a five frame standard either in a medium or in a deep, it's, it's better. You put one frame in there with a queen okay. cell, and then let's say you become allergic in a year or two. You can sell five frames. You're not going to sell nobody two frame stuff. First of all, it's not unstable five. in the wind. I mean, I don't want to blow my own horn here, but there's a lot of people watch stuff that I do. They try to reinvent the wheel. Stay with simple stuff. Okay. Stay, stay with not spending a lot of money. Do it slowly and gradually. Don't go out and invest a bunch of money. That's why I took a picture of that uh, that incubator. People spending fifty mm -hmm. to two hundred, three hundred dollars on an incubator. That was a, a refrigerator that was thrown away, and all we did was shoot some pieces of wood on it and cut our bars to fit the refrigerator and put two light bulbs in it. How much simpler can you get? Right. That's what I'm trying to do, keep everything okay. simple. Okay? But good luck yeah. on your splits. I would try to find someone local that has queen cells or you can make them yourself. Just go in that hive every 14 days. Okay. If you've got queen cells, cut them. Okay. That's what okay. I would. Right. Yeah. Okay. And over to Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Hey guys. Uh, first, I want to thank Don for uh, Don. You uh, you sent somebody my way again for uh, for bee sales. So uh, seems like folks are calling every week. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. Uh, I did did see your uh, your video of your uh, your mini nukes there in your south yard, uh, and I kind of had a question. Sure. Uh, I've of course have enjoyed watching all your videos. Uh, and of course, learning from you in person, one thing, uh, well, many of the things that uh, we do in our yard are because we've seen you be successful with them, and then we try them, and they work. One of those things have been queen castles, so we've taken a lot of the five-frame boxes, eight-frame mm -hmm. boxes, uh, and, and uh, that's been a, a very safe way to make early splits, because uh, it seems like it can keep uh, both those sides of the splits warm, uh, rather than just the smaller two-frame boxes. Uh, but with you using uh, those baby nukes, it really uh, has piqued my curiosity because uh, it seems like it's really effective in getting queens going uh, quick as well. But it seems like the management is uh, a little more intense with the baby nukes than it is uh, with the queen castles because of the size of the frames there. Are you using the baby nukes uh, to get those initial queens mated? And then right. from there, you're moving those to full-size nukes, or are you going ahead and, and caging and selling the queens out of the baby nukes? Well, we're selling now. <clears throat> what we're doing, as soon as we see eggs, we have a laying queen. So we pull the queen to sell as a, uh, it's called a production queen. 
If you want a tested queen, we run them in a five frame box for three to five weeks. Now that's what I call a test and you can look at the pattern and see how she's laying. We're gonna charge more for those, but you know, but we're trying to do with the minis is mate the queens. Once the queens are mated and she's laying, then we set nukes up and we either put three to three pounds or two pounds in a nuke and we put that mated queen in there and when she comes out, she starts laying. And once we get two to three or sometimes three and a half frames of sealed brood, it's ready for sale. It's just risking less money to make more money rather than take a lot of bees. And then if you don't get good returns on your, my, your uh, queen mating, uh, you don't lose as much money. It's more efficient that way. In fact, we've got sales the 1st of February. And the nice thing about it is you cram your box full you graft in a nice hot room, which is about 80 degrees in that house. We got a fireplace. We got two electric heaters in there keeping it warm. So we got it warm. We go out there. We get a frame of brood. We come in and we graft out 300 to 500 at a time. And then we set them in our starter. And once they're sealed, then we bring them back in the house. And then we put them in the incubator. They're all set to go then. And then 24 to 36 hours, we make our nuke boxes up and drop them in. Now, right now we're, we're dropping them in, setting up, but once we pull our first queen, we go through that yard. Let's say we pull 100 queens, we drop 100 cells in, we got a queen coming back out in two to three days. It's just gotcha. turning the dollar a yeah. little faster. So those baby nukes serve many purposes. They're, they're feeding uh, queen cells, they're feeding uh, all the, the nukes that you're building early but it seems like the size and orientation of those frames, uh, mm -hmm. you're able to see the, the, the you, can, you can get the same result uh, with risking less bees because right. of the size of the baby nuke and the orientation of the frame itself. Right, you mentioned feeding. We have, these are sealed cells. They don't require no feeding. All they require is a cup of bees or even a half a cup once it warms up. The third week in uh, March, we use a half a cup to set them up because the entrances are small, There's, the cell is sealed, there's no need to feed it, it just keep enough bees in there to keep it warm or to keep it cool. It's just right. putting, the, putting high speed on, on making queens. That's good, I think you've got a video uh, on exactly how you get your baby nuke frames established so you right. do have them available to drop them in. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, oh, thanks Don. I keep mentioning there's so many ways to skin this cat. And the students that's been following me for the last three or four years, they keep going, wow, just another spin on the same thing. <laughs> so, you know, you're gonna keep learning. <laughs> All right, appreciate it, Don, thank okay. you. Okay, over to Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Hi, Don, uh, this goes back to a couple questions or uh, a a couple of videos ago where you were talking about the apen bar strips and mm -hmm. just scraping them. Right. Um, I've been kind of going back and forth with E on this a little bit. Uh, the question I have is, are you using the curved part of the hive tool or are you going to be scoring it with the flat edge? You can use either end. You just drag it across it and you've got a film, a buildup. The bees put a little film on it like. So, the manufacturers don't want you to know that that's <laughs> impregnated material. If you scrape it, you reactivate it. You know, it's just like when check might come out, they told you throw the things away. One of the representatives says they got a shelf life of about 40 years. <laughs> as long as okay. you scrape them and that powder comes off, they are activated. Okay. So, so you know, I'm, powder just, or cheap, film I'm just trying to tell you how to save money. Oh, hey, I'll listen. <laughs> Uh, so there is, so when I'm scraping, there is some little powder or something that comes off to tell me that I've scraped enough? Well, now, Checkmite has powder. Apivar doesn't. Okay. It'll just have like a film that comes off. Okay. You don't have to scrape it much. Okay. You want to try to get that shininess and just scrape it a little bit. Okay. But now, and Apivar now, don't get me wrong, because I try to do uh, natural type beekeeping, I'm commercial, so if I'm shipping stuff out as far as nukes and they go across interstate commerce, which goes across state lines, the bee inspector wants me to have Apovari in there to so 
everybody's happy there's no mites, okay? Yeah. But I have sold hundreds of, of nukes without the strips in. Uh, it's just when you get government regulations, they get a little power and they get they get like big yeah. bullies. Yeah. Uh, one last thing on Apovar. I, I don't know if I read it or heard it, but wasn't there a bad batch that came out about a year ago? Uh, did, have you heard anything about that? A bad batch as far yeah. as what? Well, I, like maybe the strips weren't medicated enough. Uh, I, I got a nasty result from them uh, last year. Usually it's from improper use, basically. It's like a lot of people, uh, I mean, I hear it hundreds of times. You can't raise bees in pine thickets. You have beetles. Yeah. You have slime. I have hundreds of students been there and look at my hives, and they're not finding mites. They're lucky if they find three to five beetles because now beetles fly. You can have zero, and then in two hours or someone drives down the street with beetles moving a hive, you're going to have them. It just maintain the hives, see? Okay, because I use a... I use the Apovar and then uh, and then oxalic acid. I have a vaporizer and just yeah. shoot it in there. If I was, you know, telling someone starting out, I wouldn't use Apovar unless you're selling across state lines. I would stick with the the oxalic acid in the vaporizer. I mean, okay. If you're going commercial and you're going to go on a project, you know, you can use that drench mess method, but I don't prefer it. You lose a lot of bees. You kill brood. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Don. Okay, over to Raina. Go ahead, Raina. Hey, Don. Uh, going back to the question of mini mating nukes, um, mm -hmm. I think I heard you in one of the previous conversations uh, saying that that's for commercial beekeepers. Uh, is it is it something that sideliners or you know backyard uh, beekeepers well, can also do? I mean, a backyard beekeeper. If you want to risk less resources. Build you a dozen or 25 of them things. I mean, you ain't got a cup of bees in there because if you've got a strong hive, you're gonna have you're gonna have cells because it goes back to the basic things. Bees are only gonna do two things. They multiply and they store honey. So once they get crowded, they're gonna make queen cells. So take advantage of it, cut the cells. And see, for a backyard beekeeper, you got 10 nukes there, you put those cells in there, you always have a good queen in reserve. And then if your neighbor loses one, you've got, you got something you could sell them. Right. And how often do you have to look at them? I mean, you know, keep an eye on them. Keep an eye on them. <laughs> how often do you eat every day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, the thing is, in my case, I don't have the bees in my backyard. I have them away where I can only go once a week. Okay. So, See, everybody's situation is going to be different. In your right. situation... I would run five frame nukes and I would just drop them in there. Okay. Put one frame of bees in there, put the cell in there. And then when you come back, say in uh, a week, to 10 days, you got a queen land, drop you three more or four more frames in there. Um, I did uh, for this year, I did make some new five frame deep boxes. And what I did was I ran a slot through the middle of the box. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have a, you know, a board in between. So I right. can, I guess, use it as a divider and then right. pull it out. You know, that is a smart thing. You watch one of my videos. That is more <laughs> sure. better or superior than a two frame nuke, which is unstable. They blow over. Right. See, the five frame is wider. It's, it's more wind resistant. Yep. So I'm looking forward to using those this uh, this uh, spring. Uh, things are looking really good here. Lots of drones, um, lots of you know, lots of bees are just exploding. I mean, there's lots of pollen coming in, nectar coming in. So looking forward to the this season. This year here, bees are getting scarce, and if you're not in beekeeping, you're not going to make any money. Right now, it's the best time to get in. You can sell everything you got. It looks like a bee. <laughs> I'm coming to see you at the beginning of April. <laughs> and you see, Greg mentioned something that most people don't understand. By taking classes, paying the $500, I'm referring you to customers constantly. I got more than I can handle. So, you know, once you know, you get registered wherever state you're from, I'm sending you customers because if someone in your area wants bees, 
I tell them, get the closest one, and if they want my stock, you're you're on the list. You Makes would spend sense. more than that five hundred dollars on advertisement. Believe me. No, I, I agree with you. I totally agree. So makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think Sharon has another question. Go ahead, Sharon. Okay. Uh, last year, I had a hard time um, with the bees um, drawing comb, and I was wondering um, how to how to get them to draw comb this year. How about you feeding them? Uh, sugar water. How much? But I don't think I fed them enough. <laughs> I, you answer your own question right there. I've been watching your videos since then. <laughs> if you put them on a diet, they're not going to draw wax. I mean, I, it's a simple thing, you know. Okay. So they when do I start that? Syrup up, and that makes a difference. When do I start feeding them syrup? When do you want to start making bees? Uh, so I could do it right now? Well, <laughs> do you stop eating a certain time of the year? No, I mean, it, no it's silly. No. <laughs> you know, if you get you, get, you keep eating and you keep eating, you grow, you get fat, and that's what we do to the bees right now. Right, we'll put the syrup to them. In fact, uh, Steve, okay, well, up see, here, I'm dry sugar. dry sugar. Well, dry sugar is not going to do as good as if you mixed it. Mix it okay. with sugar water, you know. Okay, um, uh, so that's going to build the comb, and then when the when it's time to put the supers on, they'll be ready to. Uh, when do I know to stop feeding them? When they don't take it and no put more. the supers on. When they start, okay. Making, they don't want to take it. Are you trying to make bees now, yeah. or you want to make honey? Right now, I just want to make. <clears throat> I want to make honey. Okay, what are you running? Ten frame, eight frame, or fives? 10. You want to make honey? I have four eights. Eight. Put them in eights. Eight? Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, if you just started, you should notice by now, if a year or two, the bees don't fill those outside boxes, up, the outside frames. Now, we start right. everything out in five frame, and we run five frame doubles until they get to where we can't handle them. Then we throw them in eights and then use them as shakers. Mm-hmm. You put, if you took that 10 frame high. No, I'm, just, I'm just getting started, so I, I will. It's a, it's a learning curve, but if you put them in fives, they're going to make twice the honey, believe me. Oh, really? Okay. All right. I'll give it a try. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. You got no hands up, so I'll take a question from the web. Uh, Michael wants to know, do you or should you treat packaged bees? You shouldn't have to treat package bees. I mean, they're not going to have mites unless you buy them from someone that's not maintaining their bees. But now, you know, you could do a very light type treatment. You know, if you're really worried about it, take a quarter of a cup of powder sugar and dust the whole package before you install it and just bump it around in there. And then when you install them, you know, that's going to be a little uh, insurance, but there should be no reason you should have to treat a package. So you wouldn't do OA or anything? No, no I wouldn't. Okay. People worry about the wrong things. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have any? No. We got Brett has his hand up. Uh, go ahead, Brett. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Don, have you ever had a hive abscond after treating with oxalic acid? Not really. Usually if it absconds, if you get looking in there, it's already had queen cells before you ever treated it. <clears throat> or you had another problem underlining. Some disease or something. Well, not disease so much. You could have a little bit of wax moth in there. They could have swarmed and you didn't catch it. The hive could be weak. Uh, there's a lot of things happen, you know, that, you know, unless you look at it. Yeah, because when I went in, I treated and then two weeks later and there's a ton of bees in there. And two weeks later, I went back in, and there was three dead bees on the bottom, nothing else. Well, it's it's hard to say unless – how did you treat them? With what, oxalic acid? Yeah, I fogged them. You fogged them or you vaporized them? Vaporized. With, with the uh, unit you put in the front of it? Yep. Okay. 
Uh, you know, there's no way you can guarantee bees are going to stay. I mean, I, I wouldn't say they absconded from that. It probably something else caused it. Okay. We do uh, literally a couple hundred of them a day. And, you know, at the very most, if you have a student that's not paying attention, you might kill a queen. That I've seen. But, you know, it, it's individual. Once you start using that unit, you get, you know, familiar with it. You know what you should and what you shouldn't do with it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Back over to Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Uh, Don, this goes back to the first question. I think it was Sharon that asked. Um, at this time of year, my problem, well, I have two hives right now that are huge. Uh, I run eight frame deeps. Um, these two hives are doubled. They're, they're just boiling out of the front, hanging out there during the day. Um, the, the hives are packed. So I went in there today just to, just to see what's going on there anyway. Uh, there's plenty of, uh, of drone, uh, capped, uh, capped drone in the bottom corners. There's one frame, uh, that's just covered in drone. Um, I scraped up a couple of them there. You know, they they have the purple eye. Uh, they're, they're at that stage, so I know that they're they're going to hatch soon. Um, but what do I do? I, there's cups in there. There's no there's no cells. Um, they you know no eggs and just cups. How many hives? They're, pardon me. How many hives do you run all together? Right now I have 25, but I'm talking about three that are doing this, Ram. They're humongous. They just they busted out about three four weeks ago, and uh, I'm in uh, I'm in Fresno. So the weather, we, we haven't had a winter this year. We had three inches of rain. Um, so, I mean, they're just taking off. My oh, you got to be eight or you got to be tens? No, they're on eights. An eights, doubles. Correct. Correct. So I would find someone local and I'd get some queens and I would split that at least 10 times. Okay. But they're, but, out, they're on the verge. And if you yeah. already got queens or uh, drone cells that's capped, you're going to have to keep an eye on them because they're already getting crowned. Now, if yeah. you don't want to do that, checkerboard one box. Checkerboard, you know, an empty frame in there, every other one. At least one box of it. That's going to buy you some time, maybe seven to ten days. Okay. Because I do want to start grafting next week. I, I've got no choice at least to try I don't want to lose the queens because those uh, those are my three best queens. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, worst comes to worst, I think the only thing that I could do would be to split them uh, just to save the queen in another box, that, you know, like an artificial swarm. But I, I just hate to see them fly away. Well, I would try to get you some local queens and and start you know doing something quick with them. They ain't gonna yeah. wait on you. Yeah, I know. There's nobody out here yet. Do I mean they're just now starting to graft? A uh, couple of the guys I talked to around here. So, we're in northern part of California. Central. Check Dennis Lowman. He's out there or Sue Colby. You might get some grafts from them. Yeah, they're. Uh, yeah, that's true. They're up a little ways, but that's yeah. That's I didn't think about that. So, all right. Okay. Thanks, Don. Okay. Over to Honeyock. Go ahead, guys. I say it right this time, Eric. Closer. <laughs> Honeyock. Hey, Don. Hey. Hey, we are, uh, we're going to be coming down there in a couple weeks and stuff, but you mentioned earlier about uh, shipping nukes. Uh, we've mm -hmm. had a few people asking us about it, and how do you do that? Do you, do you use... Uh, like some uh, OSB boxes, or is it a cardboard type box? What do you, what do you use to ship nukes? I I don't like cardboard. Period. I mean, if people bring them, I'll put them in their box. And there's no guarantee. When we shipped a lot of nukes, what we did was use uh, about a three quarter piece of uh, it's like underlayment uh, plywood, and we did the uh, rabbit on the top for the frame rest and the sides. And we use three eighths plywood on the sides and the bottom. And on the lid, we use quarter inch uh, plywood with three holes the size of a can. There's two and three quarter inch holes with screen on the inside. Don't put no screen on the outside if you ship. 
because they'll reject it at the post office. Okay. There'll be some woman that'll get her manicure messed up because you got spring on the outside. And when you ship nukes, you ship them two together and you put uh, six, five to six inches space between them and you put three quarter, uh, you know how we got those strips between packages? Those are the same strips. Put a strip on the top and one on the bottom on each end and that way they're unitized. And then put your shipping label on the top and then your permits on the side. And you should be good to go. And then your vent hole in the front of that hive, it has to be a, a screen on the inside. And try to keep it 20 inches wide. Those boxes are nine and a quarter and you've got two of them together. So space them out to where, you know, keep them under 20 inches wide. Because once you go over 20 inches, they measure top, they measure three sides. The customer's paying for it, but I try to, you know, keep it as cheap as possible for them. Right, okay. And insure them, insure them. Okay. But there's a demand for it. I mean, you should get a minimum shipping, $25 for the box, plus your bees, plus the shipping. Okay, okay. All right, yeah, we're gonna be, uh, we are selling your, uh, your bees up here in Illinois. Um, we're selling overwintered nukes right now, taking orders and uh, taking deposits and charging two twenty five. So, go ahead. What's what's your overwintered nuke sell for? Uh, we're we're selling for two twenty five. <laughs> I'm getting that in South Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Where you're at, add fifty bucks to that, and you'll be in the ballpark. Wow. All right. Well, look at that guy in New York. He's selling my nukes up there for three twenty-five. Wow. I mean, is that what you want to do? <laughs> hey, when we come down there in a couple of weeks, um, I know uh, we were talking to you the other day about uh, the actual grafting itself, but uh, we're looking at. You said there's there's some setup and stuff. So uh, would that be things that we could be doing and, and helping out down there as far as your, in your yard setting up or At the is it house, just in the house yeah you could do it and i've got two full-time people that's works for us down there you can because i've already told them that we're going to have students coming in sitting there watch and if you want to do some grafting that day do a bar or two i mean i'm not trying to tell you to do a hundred bars or you know a hundred we're doing 14 to 17 cells to a frame and that the fellow that's working for us, he's knocking out 500 in less than an hour. <laughs> okay. So don't try to keep up with them. It's the same thing when you come down to my yard. Don't try to keep up with me. I keep telling you that last time, remember? Yeah. It's yourself. Okay. It's not about speed. All right. Thanks, Don. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Pat, did you still have a question? Um, well, I think it was Todd. I'm sorry, I've got a head cold, so I'm kind of stuffy. Uh, I think it was Todd was asking what to do with his boxes that were so full. The first thing that we do is we find the queen. And so one box gets the queen and one box, you make sure there's a frame of eggs. And the box that does not have the queen throws multiple queen cells and they're easy to harvest if you have wax. Uh, foundation, um, but it's a real easy way to produce a lot of queens because each each frame of eggs will put five or six queen cells on there, and they're easy to harvest. They're very easy to cut off and put onto another frame. Um, you just have to be careful that you don't dent them, but other than that, they're pretty sturdy. As long as you don't have plastic foundation. Yes, it has to be wax. <laughs> A little hard to cut through the plastic. Yeah, and you got to, some of times, it's, for some reason, they seem to like to put the queen cell right on the wire in, if you have wired foundation. So uh, I like wired foundation in my honey supers, but in my high bodies, I like just the plain foundation with no wires because we cut queen cells all summer long. It's a real easy way to get queens. I don't have the vision to do a lot of the, you know, intricate uh, harvesting eggs and transferring them and all. But uh, if you move the queen, they're going to throw queen cells. 
and if they don't have brood, they increase the honey production tremendously because they have nothing else to do till that queen emerges and starts laying. And so if you time it with when nectar flow starts, it really increases your honey production. Okay, thank you, Pat. That's all. All right, over to Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Hello, you guys. How are you? Okay. Um, I did order some bees this year. I didn't get Russians from this company. They ran out. This one brand, this one um, bees, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's S A S. Saskatraz. That's good, Robbie. trash. Yeah, yes. I got that. I ordered that kind. Um, it's going to be in by April. I'm getting me Italians for my guy in uh, Southern Maryland, Italians. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, does anybody have that kind of bees? The Saskatraz, I know. Um, there's a couple people in the group that have them. I can't off the top of my head name them though. Um, what is their um behavior? I guess I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay. So. <clears throat> That's all right, right this minute. Okay. All right. Thanks, Robbie. All right. Uh, um, let's see. We've got Patricia again. Go ahead. Pat. Yeah. Oh, this is for Robbie. It's real easy to be on the internet on the other chats and things and, and hear people talk about these latest and greatest the Saskatraz, the ankle biters, the this and the that. <laughs> and it's easy to get swept up in that uh, hype that they put out they're just trying to sell their bees. So you really want to get local bees from a local producer that is winter hardy in your area. Um, so if you're having to get them shipped in from very far away, there's going to be a, a problem with, you know, the shipping slows them down a little bit. If they're, if you don't know the particulars of that breed, um, you could get them and you've already missed nectar flow. Uh, so, just be real careful about buying all the different latest and greatest because um, sometimes they're not. Um, and you know, Don's bees are tried and true and there's enough people uh, across the Eastern seaboard that you can find a producer uh, close enough to you. Um, and start with local mutts. That's gonna be your best results, your most success. I can attest to that. I bought some Buckfast thinking those were the best and thing out there and everybody was saying how good they are and sorry, they're just Italians. That's, that's really about it. Nothing great about them. Didn't see any significant honey production or anything. So whatever. One reason I do not advertise. People call me all the time. What kind of bees you got? Honey bees. <laughs> honey bees. Honey bees. Um, you know, you know, a lot of it is advertising and trying to promote something. The hype. Mm -hmm. Often people who has the bees, who's worked the bees, you know, if you got a, a if, let's say you bought a jet, you got a good deal on a jet, you know, but you can't fly it. Well, now you <laughs> want the bees. so great, but you can't work them. And I'm not going to mention any kind of, you know, races, but I've had some that will not stay on the frame when you inspect them. And I've had some that'll run you to the house. And I don't care <laughs> you have. So, you know, enough said about that. Ask people in your area who they buy their bees from and, and watch how they work them. Okay. And over to Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Don, I'm interested in uh, making a trip out to Georgia. And um, I've made comments before on Facebook about how uh, I wouldn't mind if you put me to work. But my question is this. Um, 
I don't think you have anybody past Texas, right? Nobody west of Texas. Uh, there's a couple people in uh, Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, Jason Fly is in Oklahoma, and I think I've got another one that is either taken. I can't keep up with it because they'll pay the five hundred dollars to get on my page. They come once or twice, which you know, if they can learn it in that time, that's up to them. But they look at it; it's cheap advertising. Well, my question is, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm scared to fly over there because I'm I'm too afraid that I'll probably end up buying something, and then what am I going to do? You know, I'd rather drive over there. Well, uh, you can't uh, put them on the plane. <laughs> yeah, they have uh, to go down. Yeah, so uh, I think logistics, logistic wise, getting them out here and getting set up with them, uh, I, I, I'm guess I'm only my only choice is to drive them back right well that's one option I mean you could you could have queen ship to you but you got a long process of building it um for new people what do you do about the drone population that's around you mean uh, new students that's selling the stock yeah I would suggest that they're buying just queens not try to sell them for a year or two Okay. And run some drone comb and make sure you're buying mated queens from me. Okay. You know, get nice. a new queens and get different lines and then, you know, set your drone comb up. Okay. Now, we're running a lot of, of nukes in a couple of our yards. So, we're running some uh, hives right beside of them, which are our feeder hives or we supply our nukes with. And mm -hmm. each of those got two frames of green comb on the outside of eight frame double deeps. Now, the ones we shake from, we don't run no gr no green comb in those because we want worker bees in our packages. Yeah. We're going to get drone comb, or we're going to get drones in our packages, but we don't want to flood it. Okay. Well, bottom line is I have to get out there. So uh, I've been threatening to do it for about a year. Just <laughs> well, you know, there's one of my students, you can buy stock from them right there in Texas. That's half the drive. Well, that's true. That's true. There's another option. That's true. Okay. All right. In That'll fact, work. get a hold of Kelly. He's coming March, and he's picking up a bunch of nukes and a couple. I think he's getting four or five hundred queens from us. Kelly Jordan. Yeah. Kelly Jordan. And then okay. another one of my students in northern Texas, he's coming a week later, and he's picking up, I guess, three or four hundred packages. Uh, Ron. Okay. Okay. They're oh. listening on my page. Okay. Hey, Todd, yeah. what a lot of people will do is get like a, a lot of pre-orders for Don stock where you are, and then they'll go and pick up maybe, you know, 20 of them, keep 10 for you and sell the other 10, and that should pay for your trip. Yeah. I know okay. Greg does that a lot and gets pre-orders along his route. Okay. All right. There, where there's a will, there's a way, I'm sure. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Never. True, or can't. <laughs> All right, over to Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, this is for Todd. Um, my, uh, my, my comment is, if you do start to use drone comb, be very careful with it. You will have more drones than you'll know what to do with. Um, <laughs> uh, Don's also got another student in the Houston area. That's me. Um, if, if you ever need anything, just give us a call. Um, but yeah, if I, I, even in the Houston area, the drive to Don's is kind of, is, is daunting. I, I'm not sure if all the way from where you're at, it, it could be rough. Um, but uh, I'm heading to Don's in April to pick up a whole bunch of packages. So, okay. Well, there's, there's your way to you get you some, you know, if you want nukes, I mean, there's another option there. Uh, yeah. You say Texas now, just, it just jogged my mind. I've got one in Oregon, it actually drew out, uh, Ocean, Oceanville Apiaries. He's in Oregon. Um, I can't think of his name. Uh, the big tall guy. Okay. Uh, Wiseman. Wiseman is his last name. Well, that's a day's drive right there. Yeah, well, he's got my stock, and then there's another one up in Olympia, Washington. So, you know, 
I've got so many, it's hard to keep up. And I'm an old man. I just got, you know, my filing cabinet's all messed up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve, you didn't have your name, but I believe that is Steve Dunn from Texas. Yeah, right. That's correct. Okay. You don't have your video on. How can we tell who you are, Steve? <laughs> uh, it's not video appropriate. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, you better keep it off then. <laughs> All right, let's see. Over you know, another thing is, you know, we get a lot of ladies that come there and think that it's hard to make a living. Now, we've got a student in South Georgia that she just got started, and she's selling about $15,000 worth of bees a week. So don't say you can't do it or you wouldn't do it or you can't, you know. Don't make excuses. It's being self-employed, you can make the money. And grafting, once you get to where you could graft, I mean, if you don't want to sell bees, you can work. Most people pay $75 an hour for you to sit there to graft. I mean, a good grafter will make $10,000 worth of bees for you a, a day. Believe me. Okay, Sharon has another question. Go ahead, Sharon. Um, yeah, I, I have a couple of queens coming, I, I think in April from Don. Um, and I talked to him earlier about the, the uh, wax, the, when he said to get the 4.9 the cell. Uh, cell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do you, do you get the green drone frame and put one of those in there? The green is not for with, with the... Uh, yeah, I know, but is that what you do? No, we buy. Did you put green. one? We buy the plastic green. That's okay. Rooms. So just put one of those in there, and that's where they'll. The only place they'll put the drone is on that. No, there's no guarantee that that's the only place. Sometimes they got a mind of their own. Right. <laughs> But you know, when you first start out, you probably don't need green comb. Okay. You know, your hive will probably- So with, with the, so with the 4.9 cells, uh, wax, just put that in there and that start them off like that? Well, I'm using an inch and a half to two inch starter strip on just about 90% of everything I do. Now, that's what I do. I'm old fashioned. Now my son is more on plastic because he he has a lot of nukes going out, and you seen the four wheeler that he had in the field. He drives that like a racetrack, uh -huh. and when you got natural drawed comb, you got a two inch honey band, and you hit a pothole, the frame falls or the wax and stuff falls. So he went to plastic for that main reason. He's in the business okay. well nukes, not to go natural. Okay. Right. I'm more uh -huh. I'm trying to teach the old ways and sometimes people don't like the old ways. It's like well, can I ask you another question? Sure. Um I had some people tell me to take because I have plastic the plastic frames. Mm -hmm. And they said to uh rub wax on them. Like the the wax from when you got got the honey and you rendered down the wax, they said to, to rub the wax on them and they'd draw it out faster? Yeah, well they will. Or you can take a little sponge, a little, uh, it's one inch by four inch roller and use a small roller and heat the wax up and then just roll it on. If there's too much wax, uh -huh. the bees will redistribute. Okay. okay. That's a good idea to do, to get them to start drawing. Yeah. I know, I, you know, I keep okay. saying the same thing. There's more than one way to skin a cat in beekeeping. So, you know, I'm trying to teach a lot of different ways. It's like when people come and they're wanting to learn grafting and I try to explain to them and they have no experience of nothing. It's like they come to me, and they, they don't know how to ride the tricycle, but they want to ride the high performance motorcycle first day. So you have to go step yeah. to step and learn the basics and build on that. Okay. Go okay. slow and go steady and you'll be good. Okay. What's your thought on selling uh, honey? 
<laughs> if you want to sell honey, I mean, someone has to. <laughs> well, I know, but it, it seems like on one of your videos, I, I saw something about, uh, or what you said was, uh, was it a liability? Is, it a, is there any liability to it? Do you put honey in your mouth and eat it? Yeah. All right. Now, what if you got sick? Are you going to sue me? Or are you going to laugh about it? So is that a liability? Well, yeah. Can you get sued? Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. I mean, people... I'd have to rethink that, that then. <laughs> well, I mean, there's always going to be people who want to sell honey. There's always going to be people who want to sue you. So... You know, you have to yeah. take the good with the bad. I've sold honey over the years, and in the last five years, if I sell honey, it's in fives and fifty fives. That's the only way I sell it. See, okay. if you're going to sell honey, you've got a cost of the jar, you've got cost of insurance. What is your time worth to sit at a flea market or, or just to deliver honey? I can sit on my yeah, butt. Right my queen yard and make two grand a day just on my butt <laughs> so you have to get to that stage <laughs> i mean you know we right. used to sell honey for 19 cents a pound so how much honey do you have to sell to make a living and now if you're selling yeah. honey honey is about two to four dollars a pound if you want to make a living at it you got to run at least 200 hives you got to have a big equipment yeah. a big extractor big insurance and help to move it yeah. so the smaller you stay you know the more you're going to make as far as honey if you want to make money do the bees everybody and his brother is selling honey nobody is selling bees and quality bees right okay that's what i'll I, get to that point advertisement was put in in 1970 i turn customers away believe me Thank you. Okay. okay. Over to Ernest. Go ahead, Ernest. Oh, you got unmuted on your end. There you go. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Don, I was thinking, uh, you know, I'm about half fast on that grafting, and I have an incubator uh, fridge just like you got. Uh, uh, you think it's possible to, to graft, say, one bar and then turn around and put it in that refrigerator, which it has the humidity and the temperature, the same as the hive, uh, to get all four bars uh, grafted? Uh, you think that would work? To do what? To draw them out? You need to put them in a hive. No, just to put them in there till I'm ready to go put them in the hive. Well, what's the time frame we're looking at? Well... Uh, you know, if, if I gr uh, graft one, you know, it takes me about probably 10 minutes to do a bar. Then you need to get them out into the hive. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't that incubator uh, refrigerator keep them warm and moist uh, long enough to... It keep them warm, but it don't keep them moist. Well, it's got a, a humidifier in there. No, mm, well, it's not the same as putting them in the hive. Okay. And are you priming your cells too, or are you dry grafting? What's that? Are you priming your cells, or are you dry graft? No, I dry graft. Well, they'll dry out a lot faster too that way. If you prime them, uh, the guy that's grafting for us down there, he's grafting six bars or 12 bars at a time, and he's doing that in less than five minutes, and he walks out no longer than 10 minutes to back in a hive. Well, you wouldn't make no money on me at $25 an hour then, would you? <laughs> You're doing it to learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Don, I appreciate it. Living. Okay, over to Keith. Go ahead, Keith. So, Don, I've got um, <clears throat> I've got a couple um, five-frame um, mediums that I keep here at the house close by, and... Um, they're, uh, one of them's two boxes, one of them's three boxes high. <clears throat> and one of them, um, we've had some warm days off and on here the last month or two, and one of them doesn't seem to ever hardly fly, hardly not much activity, and, and yet the one right next to it will just be going gangbusters. 
both of them are about the same amount of shade, same amount of sun. Just wondering if you had any thoughts on that. I, have, I haven't been in there rooting around yet to see what's going on, but I, I pulled up the sugar to look at them and they're moving around in there. They're, they just seem like they're clustered, even though it's kind of a warm day. Well, there's no two queens that's going to produce the same. I mean, you could draft off one queen and basically do a thousand off of it, and you're going to get maybe a 30 that are real top producers, and then you get a lot of us mediocres, and then you're going to get some are just plain slackers. I mean, it's just life. I think it's the personality of the, the bees in the hive? Well, you got to figure what the queen made it with. You know, if she made it with a bum, you know, she's going to have bum, bum stuff. <laughs> okay. Go get her. She's going to have a go get her. I mean, that, you could have mites. I mean, check for mites. Uh, you could have, you got any uh, discoloration on the front of the hive? No. This Not this year. Uh, well, if you're treating them regular, they should be, you know, about the same. Okay. I just thought maybe you had some insight of something funny was going on there. The other know. question I had was, um, is there any, any manipulation or, con or condensing that I, that I need to do in the spring as it starts to warm up? I'm, what I'm anticipating is that they're probably all on the top of the hive and maybe well, the bottom the boxes are not coming in. You know, reverse the boxes, you know, that's okay. one thing. Is there any, any reason just to pull an empty box off the bottom and let them build, will it help them build up faster? Manipulation by itself will get them to, you know, move. Okay. You know, if you're in an area where they're cold, you know, if you're in a cool area, they're migrating to the top, they're less likely to go down unless you reverse them boxes. That's what I was wondering is, is whether you should reverse them or just, or just pull them, let them build up and throw them back on. You have to do a little work on these bees. They don't do a lot of it for us, you know. Okay. Some people just don't like to, you know, move boxes and change them around. The more you manipulate them, the more you're going to, you know, work them. To do right. The other last question I had was, you keep mentioning there's more than one way to skin a cat, and I'm trying to figure out why in the world you're skinning cats in the bee yard. Well, you always need some fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do a video on that then? Oh, no. <laughs> That's all I got. Thanks. All right, over to Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Uh, real quick, Don. Uh, I've watched all your videos from, I don't know, the past five, six years. That's what I've been doing the last three, four years. I was doing starter strips a lot, and I like it. But there, I don't know if it's a time of year or, or what, but they'll draw out a ton of drone comb, and that's all they'll do. I'll go back in there, cut it out, throw it back in there, and Two weeks later, it's all drone comb again. What what can I do? Are you you got? Are you putting all drone comb? Or are you putting the starter strips between a frames that's already drawn out? Yeah, no, I've got I've got a guide for them. But when I put even if it's in the middle of the of the box, they'll just draw drone comb. It's like they're telling me, hey, I want to make drones. Well, usually when they're doing that, my thought would be your queen is either failing or there's something the matter. Okay. Do you wear gloves when you inspect? Sometimes I do. Most times I don't. You know, sometimes if you roll a queen or bump a queen, they'll start yeah. producing a lot of drone comb. Yeah. But, you know, in the springtime, if you put starter strips in there and you're getting a lot of drones, it's usually you got a damaged queen or a failing queen. Okay. Now, in the fall, it's a different story. Just uh, slowing down, queen? I've seen people, though, that's got drone comb from starter strips that are just putting too weak a, a, a sugar syrup on. Oh, okay. See, we're doing about a four to one. You know how peach syrup is when you pour it? Yeah. Ours is a little thicker than that. We want our bees to grow instead of yeah. spending time evaporating, you know, the water. And right now, this year, the problem we're having in some of our yards has been raining so much, the moisture. <laughs> And the only thing that's yeah. saving us is that thicker syrup. If we would put one to one, those bees would have di diarrhea everywhere. <laughs> the lowest I go is two to one. Uh, um, and that's still low. Well, you know, if you're not getting the results, then, you know, I'm saying, you know, and I think uh, Vic was over here and his son, and uh, 
they look at our syrup and you know it don't make no splashes when it hits the pan and it's thick. so you know if you put your bees on a diet they're going to act that way if you feed them good, they get fat and they, they flourish okay all I'm right for years all different ways now we're putting tea tree oil in our our feed right now yeah and i follow what you do i've done the the essential oils uh and it works out great cheap so. information yeah it is thank you so much for that and everything else <laughs> you just got to get more boxes yeah I, I know i hear you saying that all the time so it's the whole truth of the matter <laughs> it absolutely absolutely true okay thank you so much Okay, I'm gonna take a web question. Uh, Debbie wants to know how many hives does it take to justify buying a tote of syrup? Well, it, you know, we right now are doing two to four totes every two weeks. And that is 3,000 pounds of weight. Uh, I would say if you had 50 hives and you're gonna expand fast, buy a tote. It's gonna be the cheapest way. If you have less than 50 hives, I'd buy bags of sugar when it's on sale. Because once you get to a certain point, mixing dry sugar, we can buy sugar for 13 to 16 cents a pound. And it's not worth it for paying that much more for it when you spend eight hours mixing it. We buy a pre-mix and we just open the valve and we're ready to go. So time is money. All right, and I think Greg was saying that the uh, the higher the ratio, the the uh, longer to last out right. in the yard. Right. If you get over uh, two and a half to three to one, it won't sour. Now on totes, we go out in our bee yards, and we're putting a cup of bleach in in three hundred gallons of syrup, and that keeps it you know from fermenting. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Robbie has a question. Go ahead, Robbie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this year I'm being more prepared. Um, I just got me a new funnel to put a, the simple soap in my uh, spray bottle so I can spray my bees down with the package and shake it in, unlike last year. So I'm being prepared. <laughs> That's what you have to do. I know. Did you see the pictures of my new funnel that no. I'm going to be using? No. You mean when you put the packaging, you've got a funnel? I have a, no, I got a funnel I'm going to be using to pour my simple soap in a spray bottle. Oh, really? Yes. Um, so I'm going to have my spray bottle ready with simple syrup, spray them down real good, mm -hmm. shake them down a couple times. When they're all on the bottom of the package, I'm going to shake them. I'm not going to get stung on my ankles like I did last year. Watch the videos. I've got at least a dozen videos up about putting packages in. Show you how to put them up in warm weather, cold weather. Make it as simple as possible. I know. You don't spray them down much in cold weather. So, so when I spray these bees in that package, bump them a couple times, do I want to make sure that most of them are on the bottom of the package before I dump them, right? I'd spray it at the screen and then just right. bump them down. Yeah. So how do I know when it's time to dump it? Well, you spray two or three sprays on each side of the screen, bump it once and dump them. Okay. <laughs> Answer your question, Robbie? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I okay, over to Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, yeah, sorry, sorry for all the road noise here. Uh, Keith, I, about your question there, about the, the hives next to each other and some are flying and some aren't. It got me kind of thinking, uh, it says you're in St. Louis. I'm, uh, I'm east of you on 70 uh, in East Central Ohio. 
And I see something real similar. Uh, I would be uh, honest and say I'm not a very scientific uh, beekeeper. I just kind of go on what I see and then kind of see if that repeats every year. What I see, yeah, even even like this year, when I if uh, I think it might be an issue with down uh, properly downsizing going into the winter time. It seems like all of the hives that just seem like they're just barely big enough to get into the winter time, those ones build up at a rate to where I think they they ventilate. They've got plenty of stores. They do well, and they're out flying as they build. What I've seen is some of the uh, some of the hives that are in doubles and triples, uh, they get too big. And then they, they have a much higher rate of attrition. Once they start dying off there, I don't know that they're staying warm enough. And so I think it's a matter of possibly uh, humidity and temperature and the bees actually being balanced in that box during those days where it's like 42 to 50. Those hives that are a little bit more balanced, I think they, they get out and fly because they're, they're, they're able to keep that cluster a little bit warmer. Some of those larger boxes that uh, seem to have the higher rate of die off and they're eating more honey they st seem to, to stay clustered up because it's almost like there's uh, the, the cluster ratio to the size of the box isn't as balanced as some of the smaller hives. So I see the same exact thing where it kind of blows your mind because it makes it look like the smallest hives are out flying and some of the biggest hives aren't. So again, that's not a scientific approach at all, but it's something that I keep seeing year after year, uh, especially when we're getting into these, these weird, wacky, super wet, uh, uh, winters there so there's something to be said about downsizing I think um, and figuring that out exactly where you are well this one that's not flying much it, it's just a it's just a uh, just two medium two five frame mediums the one next to it that does fly well is is three mediums um, I am noticing more dead bees in front of the, the smaller hive so maybe that's what it is maybe the just population of the bees is low and they're just taking it easy and not flying as much as the is a little bit stronger hive. Yeah, who knows? Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Greg. And over the last question for John Zirkel. Go ahead, John. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hey, hey. Keith. You know, a lot of these suggestions about hive, the the busyness of the, the hive entrance, um, are good. I also found out the other day when I was in my hives, I had a hive that there was hardly any bees coming out of, but I had fonded up on the frames and there was no reason for them to fly. They were all up on top eating that fondant and I thought they were dead and I kind of popped the top off a little violently and I caught a sting to the left eyebrow. So, and there was, you know, thousands of bees up on top eating that fondant. So just because they're not flying or it depends on what type of day you go there, they could have done their, um, defecation flights earlier in that day and then they're back in feeding on that fondant. So I would pop that top if the weather permits and just to see what you have in there on top. You might be surprised because that that one is, that didn't have much activity. It's probably going to be one of my stronger hives coming in the spring. So just, just food for thought there. So I've been peeking in on them and uh, they don't seem to be hitting the sugar very hard. Whereas the hive next to it that flies well, they'll be clustered and going nuts on the sugar. But I think it is a smaller cluster of bees. So tomorrow we're supposed to have a pretty warm day. So I'm going to actually get in and root around and see what they're doing, seeing how big, how big cluster they are and see if they're just hanging out on the honey. Yeah. Well, good luck with them. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have. And that'll do it for tonight. So thank you, Don, from your McDonald's uh, Hi-Fi hotspot there. <laughs> and we'll see everybody in two weeks. Appreciate everybody showing up and putting us up in the dark here. <laughs> Have All a good right. evening. Thanks, Tom. Right, thank you. If you guys want to stick around for the after chat.